Hey everybody, so I wanted to show you how this program MoleView works. It's free and accessible on the internet. Um, I'm using um, a Windows computer and Chrome. Um, I haven't tried it on any other devices, but I think that it's pretty well compatible for other ones. So when you type in moleview.org, you're gonna get this banner that pops up. You can just click anywhere and it goes away. And it already has just a random molecule in there. Um, which is fine, it doesn't matter. If we wanted to draw our own, you would hit the trash icon and it clears everything. Um, but actually what we're gonna use this for in this experiment is looking at different crystal structures. So this is kind of like a Lewis dot structure, um, which is handy sometimes. But right now I wanna look at crystal structures and there's a slightly different way of finding it. Um, so you type in the name of the chemical or atom that you're looking for, in this case, uh, the first step is to find polonium because polonium is really interesting. It's such a big atom that it will actually form simple cubic structures that are essentially perfect in terms of like having the atoms at the right position in the cube. Um, that's the only atom that I know of that does that. So it's pretty special that way. Um, Polonium is also interesting for historical reasons. It was discovered by Marie Curie and she was given a Nobel Prize in, in um, either physics or chemistry. She got one in each. I'm not sure which one was for radium and which one was for polonium, but um, she was the first woman to ever get a Nobel Prize, which is pretty cool. One of the very few people to get two of them in science. So anyway, so polonium is pretty cool. And so what we're gonna do is type in the word you're looking for and don't hit enter. If you hit enter, it's gonna pull up just the atom by itself, which isn't what we're looking for. And um, so instead of hitting enter, you're gonna hit this drop down arrow right here and then go to crystallography open database. So crystallography is the study of crystals. So that's kind of what we're doing today. And so for every structure that I ask you to find in the lab procedure, you're gonna click crystallography open database. And normally there are some choices about which one to use and I give you a number to identify which one I want you to look at. So in this case, the procedure says 1509138. So that's this one. So we're gonna open it up. And initially the settings here aren't that interesting. It's just uh, one single atom of polonium, um, which is kind of this brownish gold color. You can use your mouse wheel or if you're on a touch sensitive device, you probably can, um, zoom in and out by using your fingers, but um, it's handy to know that you can change the uh, sort of distance that you are from the atom. The first thing you wanna do is choose um, a different engine, so a different computer program to run our simulation. I'm gonna pick JMOL because that has some features in it that we need. It's gonna take just a minute and you only have to do this the first time you open um, whatever uh, thing you're interested in looking at. And so we can see this is, these lines are showing us the three axes of polonium's crystal structure. So you have A is red, B is green, and C is the blue. So essentially, um, if I were holding this in my hand, the B would be the vertical, the up and down axis. A would be to, from my left to my right. And the C would be coming out towards you at this point, so away from me. You can rotate it just by mouse clicking, left mouse clicking and dragging it, okay? And so you can kind of see all different shapes using this. Um, and what's interesting about mole view is it doesn't put atoms at every lattice point. So um, hopefully by watching the video, you learned about the difference between different kind of lattice points. And so in a simple cubic, you would normally have a atom at each corner where part of the atom is is located actually inside of the unit cell. MoleView doesn't show that. What it shows is just really the sort of basic piece that gets repeated on each corner. And that's for clarity, because if you put them um, on our more complicated structures, if you put every atom at every corner and in the body and in the face, it becomes kind of hard to see what's going on. So all of the structures you're gonna look at initially, the unit cell is not really a complete unit cell. It's kind of just you know, showing you what's happening on the one corner where the colors are located. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're going forward with it. If I wanted to see more information about what it looks like kind of in a larger sense, I go model and then load two by two supercell. 
this gives us something a little more familiar. So it's showing us kind of like the pictures from the lab procedure or your textbook, okay? Each atom is at the corner because it's a simple cubic. Um, and of course, we know that in reality, these, these sticks that are showing the, the connection between the atoms aren't actually there. So in a lot of ways, these models are also very simplified. If you wanted to get a more accurate picture of what it looks like for real, you click model and then van der Waals spheres. This is gonna show us what we call the space filling model. So remember that orbitals are, um, they get, all get added together and kind of stacked from the center from the core electrons out. So what we're seeing is the 90% probability of finding valence electrons, okay? And that's what these shapes are. And so you can rotate it and play around with it and see kind of how a simple cubic structure works. But remember that not all of the sphere at each corner is actually inside of the unit cell, okay? So if we go back to the ball and stick version, you can see like for this atom, for example, only this small fraction of the total is actually part of the unit cell. So um, I'm gonna use Zoom to draw on this. You guys won't be able to actually do this with just Zoom, although you could copy and you could download the picture and draw in paint on your computer if you want to. But so if we're looking at, um, if we're looking at this corner atom right here, the part that's actually inside of the unit cell is from the center of the atom to the edge of the atom on all three axes. So you have one here, and there's also one um, that's kind of this way coming out towards us effectively, right? So those are our three dimensions. And so this shape right here is like, if you, if you take a sphere, and cut it in half and then cut it in half and then cut it in half and keep going, you're gonna get kind of this like lime wedge shaped thing, okay? And that's the piece that's actually inside of the unit cell. So I would normally show this to you in the lab with some um, styrofoam spheres that we have cut out to demonstrate this exact topic. But instead what I have is one of those tiny oranges, um, mandarin or clementine or something, I don't know. So, when we're imagining where the unit cells go, um, the only one where the entire atom is inside of a unit cell is for the cubic structure, all right? And so um, the cubic structure that's called body center cubic, that means that you have an entire atom in the very center of the, of the unit cell structure. So body is inside, center means in the middle. Um, so that's the only one where the, the entire atom is actually part of the, that one unit. Normally, any given atom is shared between multiple repeating units. Um, so for example, if you remember from the face um, diagram video that you watched a second ago, there are six faces, but only, only half of an atom is inside the unit cell. So we would have two adjoining unit cells to make up that complete atom, right? So you would only count half at the face. And of course, each face um, having half means that there are three total atoms on a face position because there's six faces of a cube, okay? Um, that's a hint. That's one of the questions in table one, so make sure that you've got that answer correct, okay? So the face positions have half an atom at the center of the face, and there are six faces, so we get three total atoms at the face. Body center has one, face center has three total. Now corners though, so you almost never have just face and just body. There's almost always lattice points at the corner that are being occupied. And so these ones are interesting. So it's, it's not a half, that's too much of the atom. It's not even a quarter. So this is a quarter of my orange, okay? So I just took that half I had and I broke it into two pieces, right? So that's now one quarter of my orange. But interestingly, if, if you look at like the structure of sodium chloride later on in the lab, we're gonna look at that. Um, it turns out if you, place, if you place an atom right at the edge between two corner atoms, 
you put it on the edge, you get about a wedge that looks like this, one quarter of an atom inside of the unit cell. Um, as it turns out on a cube, there's 12 of those edges. So if there's one quarter at each, at each edge and there's 12 edges, then you get three atoms if you have edge position being occupied. Okay, and then the smallest piece, I have to actually grab a knife for this. The smallest piece is if you take that one quarter of an atom and cut it again. Okay, so now, oh no, my keyboard has orange juice on it. Oh well, this will smell good. Okay, so what we have here is if, if our cubic structure has one axis on top, one axis here, and there's another one coming like back and forth towards me or away from you, however you want to look at it. Only this part of that atom is actually inside of the unit cell. So since I had to break my atom down eight times to get here, it's an orange, but you know what I mean. That means this is one eighth of an atom at each corner. And of course, a cube has eight corners. So that means one eighth times eight atoms or eight positions means we have one atom at the corner position. So you should be able to fact check your first table at this point. I just gave you those answers. So make sure you take a second, pause this video and double check table one because that's gonna be used in later parts of the lab and I wanna make sure you have it right so your calculations later are correct. Okay, so going back to our mole view, so here's our crystal structure for polonium where we have eight atoms shared by different unit cells. Inside of the bars represents where um, one unit is. So we see those one eighth position, one eighth of an atom at each corner position. And so that's how we get to one atom per corner, which is what it was trying to show us when we were looking at just the unit cell in a way. Right? We know that only this one eighth is actually in, inside of this unit cell, but our total count should still be one overall. All right, so one of the neat things about using mole view is that we can actually measure the distance between things. I like to do it in terms of uh, using the van der Waals spheres because in this lab, in order to figure out how much empty space there is in a given crystal, so you can see there's a hole right there, um, there's actually two different types of holes. There's one that's a tetrahedron and one that's an octahedron that can happen in these cubic structures. Um, but we wanna quantify how much empty space, how much void there is in a crystal because that relates to some of its physical properties, things like uh, how strong is it and um, how malleable it might be. It, it also connects with kind of like density properties. So, to quantify that, um, there's a couple strategies. We are gonna try to quantify it sort of as a percentage. It's, um, well, a fraction first and then a percentage. Because when you do that, it applies to everything that could be organized as a simple cubic cell. All right, so in order to do that, you gotta use a couple of tools in here. So when we're in, as long as we have selected the J mole engine here, which I showed you before, you should only need to do that once, but if you get structures that look funny, make sure you click JMOL. Then you can use, it opens this window up for you and you can use it to measure distances and angles. And so we can also use it to classify um, different types of crystal systems at the end of the lab. All right, so the trick is that when you, when you click on this, it's gonna make a pink bar appear you have to click on the center of an atom to get that. And if you're not clicking the center, it doesn't work. Okay, and so then you take it down to the next center of the atom and it will be turned kind of like a darker pink and it tells you the distance between those two atoms. Um, in the case, I'm gonna just do that for all four of them because I wanna make sure this is actually cubic. Um, so we click the center of this one again and drag it over here. It works better with my mouse than it does with my writing pen. Okay, so you're clicking center, dragging to the next center, 
clicking center and dragging. So we can see that this is indeed a cube, all right? And the cool thing is once you have made those marks, you can actually rotate it so you can look and prove to yourself what fraction of um, atoms is actually present inside of the unit cell because you can kind of draw the unit cell here in pink, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing here by clicking from center to center. So we have two faces of the unit cell kind of drawn in here now. So we can see uh, that when I look at this flat, at the first cell I drew flat, half the atoms not inside of the cell on that plane and also half the atom on this plane. And of course, half the atom on this plane. So you can see that you get, you have to divide it into eighths, okay? The other thing you can do is you can set it up to measure angle. So if we wanna make sure this is a cube, um, these are estimates, that's what that red thing keeps telling you. If we wanna make sure things are a cube, we can, we can do the same thing and it will show us the angle. So that's 90 degrees and presumably this one's also 90 degrees. So this way we can get distances which should all be equal for a cube and we can get a measurement of the number of degrees. Okay, so that's a handy tool to use in here. So finally, in order to submit your um, evidence that you've completed this part, you wanna get it looking how you want. So like, for example, in your first upload, what you're gonna do is kind of align it so I can see the square. And you can rotate in all directions, by the way. So if it doesn't look the way you want, just keep messing with it until it does. Um, so here's our square and we're gonna go to, okay, so what you can do to print this is you can go to um, tools and then 3D model image and this downloads a PNG file of exactly what your um, 3D model is showing right then, okay? So that's one thing you're gonna upload. The way that I drew this box is intentional. So you just connect four centers and so, the reason I did that is because the next part of the lab, you're gonna draw a square or print out one that, uh, you know, from the internet or something, it doesn't matter. If you draw it, please use a ruler. This is already tricky to get right, but um, it's important that everything kind of looks the way this does right now, actually. So you draw your square to start off with, and then you're gonna draw a sphere where the center of the sphere Actually, you're gonna draw a circle because nobody can draw in three dimensions. But anyway, you're gonna draw a circle where the center of the circle is at the corners because that's what is happening in our unit cell. Okay, and so it's gonna look something like this. Um, so the inside of my circle, the way that the my Google Slides files end up looking is it can't overlay the circle the way I want. So you would start with your square, use a straight edge. And then you draw your four circles right over top of that where the center of the circle is there. And so this is another opportunity to see how the, the fraction that's inside of the cell applies. So this part in here, this part in here, and I don't expect you guys to draw this part on your computers or anything on your paper. You don't need to fill it in like this. I'm doing this to show you this is the one eighth that we're talking about that's at each corner position like that, okay? So that's the one eighth. And of course, this is just a two dimensional representation of the unit cell, but um, that's all we really need because we know once we figure out two dimensions, we can cube it and get volumes in terms of all three dimensions, height, length, width, like that, okay? So anyway, here is, your, your four spheres, all right? And so the thing to realize is that if the center of the atom is located, of each atom actually, is located at the corner, then when the atoms touch like this, that's one radius from the center to the edge of that atom, and then from the edge of this atom to the center of that one is another radius. And so in this experiment, and sort of Normally, we define the um, sides of crystals by the letters A, B, and C. So in this case, all of those are equal. So we're just going to label this as A, that being the first letter, of course. And so we can define A in terms of how many R there is. In this case, A is going to be equal to 1, 2 R's. So you could just write A equals 2 R. 
All right, and so that is the beginning of the calculation for the void fraction. After that, and this is going to apply for every unit cell you look at, once you know what A is all by itself, you can cube that value. I want to warn you something. So if we define A as 2R, um, when you go to cube that, you have to remember, so volume equals A cubed is what I'm saying. When you go to cube a value with a coefficient and a variable, put it in parentheses. You're going to save yourself so much effort and headache because what happens is this. So the volume, in this case, this is the volume of the entire unit cell because we are defining the square. The volume here is going to be 2R cubed, okay? And so, of course, you're going to have to cube the 2 and the R. The answer is not 2R cubed, okay? And so it's really important to watch those parentheses when you're doing these calculations. Okay, so go ahead and finish this calculation. Um, the procedure walks you through it, and I'll see you in just a minute to work on body center cubic together.